What's up everybody, it's Conger Live. We're back again with another TMNT Mutant Madness video. And today we are going to be looking at what I believe are the best equipment skills in the game. Now, just because these are the best equipment skills, it doesn't mean that these are the best characters, but some of these characters are definitely benefiting a lot from these equipment skills. We've already gone through all of them, but now I've taken a much closer look as to what I think are the best. I'm going to tell you a little bit about why, but if you're new to the channel, then you kick that subscribe button for more TMNT Mutant Madness content. And with that, let's go get into it. Okay, first up, I have a few honorable mentions. We have Krang, Super Irma, and Leonardo. And the reason why they didn't quite make the cut, it's not that these aren't skills, that these skills aren't great. These are actually the best kind of flat stat kind of skills that we're looking at. Now, Krang also does get some resistance to, to disarm, which is awesome, but that armor helps give him more damage output based on his kit. The flat stats of armor, focus, and will for Super Irma, and the flat stats of haste and strength for Leonardo. These all just lend themselves to these characters' kits, so these are great equipment skills in the fact that they're easy to read, they're easy to understand, and they definitely benefit these characters the way they should. So those are a couple honorable mentions. So the first one I'm going to go into, we're going to count from 10 to 1. Now, of course, this is subjective. You could completely disagree with me, but I think that the number 10 equipment skill in the game is Hunter Casey. So we're going to go ahead and look at Hunter Casey's skill. After attacking, gain two strength for 20 seconds. And whenever an enemy is knocked out, he gains defense. So the reason why he's number 10 is we value gaining defense. Um, it's great that he's gaining it after knocking on an enemy. There is a slight condition there, but that's great. And then this 20 seconds of strength bonus after attacking. So giving him haste getting his attacks off, he's going to stack a lot of strength. Karai also does this exact same thing, but Casey made the cut because he also gains the defense, which we feel has more value than the other text in Karai's kit. It was definitely a coin toss with these two, but I decided to go with Hunter Casey as he is new and everybody wants to get excited about the new characters. Our number nine slot goes to Mona Lisa. Now the reason why Mona Lisa makes this as one of the best equipment skills is because not only does she do this kind of flat stat bonus to all allies at range two, which is gonna be most of her allies most of the time, this includes herself, gets the strength and focus bonus, but she also gives the alertness bonus when they're taking damage over time, slowed, stunned, rooted. So if they're experiencing any of these negative status effects, she's still gonna be giving them some extra help, but they're always gonna get that extra strength and focus bonus. Um, and that includes herself, which is why Mona Lisa gets number nine for the best equipment skills on this list. Coming in at number eight is Mondo Gecko. And I know a lot of people are probably happy to hear about that. Mono Gecko is an amazing character, and his text for this equipment skill is just really, really good. Now, it's not flat stats, but they happen often. After using a skill, gain 45 armor, 45 barrier, 45 strength, and 45 haste for two seconds. Now, two seconds doesn't seem that long, and if it's not rooted or slowed, so you can shut it down, but this is a huge bonus. Four huge bonuses for two seconds after using this skill. Haste is gonna get him to charge his ultimate up faster. That ultimate then is gonna re-trigger this. Um, I can see any team where Mondo's on the team and you're also giving him some sort of will and some sort of haste, he's gonna be firing off. He's gonna be staying alive, doing tons of damage, and it's just gonna be nasty. So this is a great equipment skill. Coming in at number six is Ray 
filet. Ray has this text where he gives defense to all allies at range two. All allies, that includes himself, not other allies, all allies, including himself. After basic attacks, he gives defense to basically everyone. Range two is a decent amount of range. Also, anyone with that range all the time is gaining 15 strength. This equipment skill is amazing. Uh, I think that we might see some more Ray play as a tank support character based on this skill alone. He was already pretty good sitting on the fringe. Uh, I used Ray a whole lot because I didn't have access to other tanks when I was early on in the game. And I really enjoyed the way Ray played and having him on my team. If I had Ray at four stars, I would definitely be playing with Ray uh, around with Ray some more based on this skill. Uh, I really like this text. And at number five, it's the queen herself, April O'Neil. Now, I already have gear on April because I'm using her all the time. This skill, after using a skill, any other skill, active skill, whatever it is, she strips defense to all enemies. And you're thinking, why isn't she number one? Well, it's because of how we value status effects and what they do. And stripping defense is amazing and to all enemies is great. And that's why she gets the number five slot for one of the best equipment skills in the game. She's already one of the best characters in the game. So the fact that she gets this bonkers good skill, uh, it's kind of mind blowing. Um, but there you have it, April at number five. Okay, before we get into the top five, I do want to mention one more honorable mention combo duo that could be happening, and that is Technodon and Rat King. The way how both of these equipment skills supply help to one another. Whenever an allied summon is attacked on tech, the Tesla Slap, he gains focus and gives all of his turrets focus. So. If rats are out there, he is also going to gain that extra damage output, and so are his turrets. The rat swarms gain 45 armor and haste, and he himself gains haste per allied summon. So with this haste that Rat King gets, the more summons, the faster he's going to attack, which is going to charge up that alt meter, and he's going to summon more rats. With the two of these guys on the board together, I could see the board having... All six rat swarms getting out there, plus three or four turrets just wrecking, making things just overwhelming by putting these two together. I want to see some testing, but this is an honorable mention because the way that these work together just look absolutely amazing. Okay, so let's get into our top five. In fifth place, I actually have to use the screenshot because it's Fugitoid. Fugitoid Salcor gains defense at the start of combat, and that's fine. But all allies gain 30 haste and 15 focus. If you haven't figured it out by now, I value haste, especially when it's being given to all of his allies at range two, because haste charges up your super meter. Every time you do damage with your basic attack, that character is going to get closer and closer to using his super. And of course, that 15 focus to all of his allies, that's more damage output to everyone. And all allies includes himself. So Fugitoid makes the number five slot. Coming in at number four is the Grandmaster, Splinter. Why Splinter, you ask? It seems pretty simple. Gain 30 strength and 30% resistance to stun. Stun is probably the most powerful status effect in the game. So to be able to resist that 30% of the time, it's almost one out of three times. That is amazing. That makes this skill one of the best skills for the equipment skills in the game. I have witnessed my splinter avoid stuns from April and Metalhead and it really makes a difference because then he's able to then give defense to someone else with using his special and keep his team in the fight. A very, very, very useful equipment skill. So in third place, 
Shock and Awe, Bebop. And the reason why Bebop gets this is because he also has that resistance to stun. But he also has resistance to silence. So he's got just a little bit extra than Splinter does. And he gains 30 focus instead of strength because he's a blaster character. He does blaster and brawler, so he does both. But um, these are almost identical skills, but this one just has that extra resistance to silence. Now silence isn't all that powerful, but because he has extra text in here, it is technically a better skill than the one Splinter has, which is why Bebop gets third place for the equipment skills. And coming in at number two, the second best equipment skill in the game goes to Napoleon Frog. What? Napoleon Frog? Napoleon gains 60 haste all the time. That is insane. Plus, at the start of combat, he inflicts stun for two seconds on the closest enemy. This gives you an early advantage, and he's going to be able to keep hammering off his basic attacks so he can keep using his specials. Napoleon, how you once were a bane of our existence, you are creeping your way into the meta with this type of improvement. So, for those of you who have Napoleon, if you want to test playing with him, especially with this, he was great when we had him mutated last week. This skill is amazing. And the number one most amazing top tier best equipment skill of all 51 characters that we have right now is Tempestra. Tempestra, my goodness girl, holy crap. She does bounce back damage. After being attacked, she does damage back. No one else does this. But the second part of the text, inflict stun for one second if under 40 health. Whenever someone hits her with a basic attack, she stuns them for a second. Stun is the most powerful status effect in the game, and she's literally handing out stuns like they're candy once she's below 40% health. And if you look at the next rarity and work your way up, it goes to 50%. So it stands to reason that if and when we start getting five stars, below 60% health, Tempestra is going to be absolutely nasty she's gonna help turn the tide of the battle i believe she's now worked her way up into being a viable character she might actually be a tier after taking a closer look at this and if we were to do some more testing with her uh, i have a feeling she's going to be going further up in the uh, the tiers and i'm going to see more people using tempestra because of this amazing skill right here well, that's all we got for today. Thank you for sitting with me. Enjoy the video. Make sure you ninja kick that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more TMNT Mutant Madness content. And with that, let's game smarter, and I'll see you in the next video.